Hi all, Ben here from East West bringing you video number 14 in our Python for Finance for Python Beginners series. So in this video we're going to take a look at a less attractive idea which is calculating drawdowns. Now knowing a system's drawdown is a necessary evil so we need to know how to calculate it. Now as always we start here in our utilities folder which is the subfolder of our main Python codes folder and from here we'll just simply start a new project by opening a blank Jupyter notebook. So next I'll do as I always do and just fill in all the headings uh, and download the libraries that we'll need. So there's no new libraries here. There's nothing that we haven't already used so far in this series. So the first thing I need to do is to download some data. So I'm just going to use the Dow Jones uh, from the year 2000 onwards. So now we just need to work out the returns and we'll do this exactly the same way as we did in the last video. So first we'll just declare a variable called BAL for balance. And then we'll basically just use the same code from the last video. So if you have that notebook open from the last video, you can just copy and paste across. But just make sure that your data frame here and here matches whatever you've downloaded here. Okay. So when we bring up the tail of this data frame, we can see here that we've got a balance of $28,912 from our initial $10,000. But we want to know what was the maximum drawdown in percentage terms that we had to wear over those 22 years to reach that number. So the first thing we need to do is to calculate the maximum, what the maximum value for the balance was as it moved through the years. Now we do this by simply using the, the cumulative max function. So first we need to create a column and I've just called this column the benchmark high. So what we need to do is to work out the maximum value of the column, which is the balance column. So df.bal, but then we want the cumulative maximum. So now let's run that cell. Now when we call up the data frame, if we call up the, the head of the data frame, let's call up the head. We'll just call up the first 20 entries. But you can see here as the balance grows, the maximum, the benchmark high grows, but once uh, the balance stops growing, the benchmark high remains until the balance becomes higher, uh, higher again. So it's just a cumulative running total of the maximum high of the benchmark. So if we just go back to the tail of this data frame, and we'll just bring that up as well. We can see here that the benchmark high, the highest the account got to was $32,000 and now we're down to $28,900. So haven't had a great time of it lately. So now let's work out the drawdown. Now we do this by simply adding a new column and we'll call this one benchmark drawdown. And then all we need to do is to take the balance away from the balance high. So if we run this cell, and then we call up uh, the data frame again, and we can just call up the tail again. We can see here we, we're given a cash difference between the benchmark high and the change. Now, that's great, but we actually want to know what this is in percentage terms, as that, uh, that's going to be a bit more useful. It gives us the best result. So uh, let's store that result into a variable called drawdown. So to calculate the drawdown, we need to start by dividing the result of the benchmark drawdown column by the benchmark high column. Now, as that drawdown value always be a negative, the result of the, of the division between the benchmark drawdown and the benchmark high will also always be a negative number. Now, we're looking for the most negative number in the column, so we need to use the min function. So first we need to wrap the first calculation in brackets and then we need to apply dot min pardon me dot min to get the minimum value. So if we request the value of drawdown at the end of this cell and then run the cell pardon me so we can see here the codes return the greatest drawdown in the set which we see here is 
down 53.7%. Now you could further clean this up by simply rounding the total and that gives us a rounded off total of down 54%. So we performed this operation on an index being the Dow Jones. Now if we were to perform the same exercise on an individual stock we would have to take into account more factors such as dividends and stock splits that could drastically affect the price but that's for another time. Maybe you could try to work it out for yourself. So that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.